the practice of authentic allyship is rooted in love, leadership, followership, and vision. The word love has a lot of freight to carry in the English language. Too much freight, really. The ancient Greeks, for instance, had many words for love, ranging from love between siblings and friends, love between parents and children, self-love, erotic love, and risking love. Popular culture often focuses the word love in a way that limits it to feelings. This usage leads to a passivity with regard to one another. As long as we feel love for those most impacted by the caste system, we are free to consider ourselves good people, even if our only response is to yell at the TV or to write that angry Facebook post. In recent years, this has been called slacktivism. In the context of allyship, we want to use a very specific meaning of the word love. A path to understanding love is the willingness to take a risk so that oneself, neighbors, and neighborhoods can experience peace, shalom, salam, shanti, etc. Love involves recognizing the injustice of the caste system and risking self and status to dismantle it. Feelings may be involved before, during, and after, but feelings themselves are not enough. Love includes risking for ourselves. Authentic allyship is about bringing change to the caste system that will also benefit us in the long run. Living in a caste system does damage to our emotions, bodies, and spirit, and the planet of which we are part. Work to dismantle it while involving risk is not about self-harm, but rather seeking the well-being of all, including ourselves. Next, Love includes risking for our neighbors. Recognizing that all human beings, and more, are our neighbors. But we must be clear here. This is not the love of a superhero swooping in to save others, getting a standing ovation, and then flying off. Lila Watson, an Aboriginal leader from Australia, writes this. If you have come here to help me, you are wasting your time. But if you come because your liberation is bound up with mine, then let us work together. Lastly, love includes risking for the neighborhood. Western society rightly honors the value of each person and individual, but this focus can blur the importance of the neighborhood, that is, the institutions and systems which are important for us to thrive, but which are distorted by the caste system based on race to benefit some and not others. We use the word leadership in a particular way as well. Within the caste system, leadership is often understood and expressed as power over others. As such, leadership can become a dirty word, understandably so. Yet we also know that we need people to step forward and together make changes. The word leadership is about how we move in the world and how that movement influences others. In this course, leadership is engaging a situation with your authentic self so that all may be more authentic to themselves. Thus, leadership is not about power over others, but power with others. There may be a moment in which someone needs to make the first move, in other words, to show leadership. Authentic allyship also means being a good follower. Unhoned people, for instance, know the most about homelessness. They understand how they got there and how the system falls short for them and what it would take for things to be different. Followership is taking the lead of those most impacted by the caste system. Of course, leadership and followership go hand in hand. Imagine people gathered in a circle. Someone steps forward to share an insight and then steps back into the circle itself. In the caste system, white men have often been awarded the privilege of stepping forward first. Some others are excluded from stepping forward altogether. Leadership by a white man within a caste system may be to resist the urge to step forward first, or to step forward at all. He can show leadership to other white men by being a follower. Leadership by a woman of color may be to step forward first, 
again, leadership and followership, are about how we move in the world and how we move with each other. As the group recovers from the caste system and creates a more mutual partnership, then it will matter less who speaks first. Yet we must be clear that the old system will try to reassert itself. We will need to be on the lookout for old patterns to reemerge. Of course, there will be people outside that group, outside of that circle, who will see things differently. Among some of them, the best spokesperson will be the white man. There are people who will listen to me that will not listen to my friend and colleague, Anila Afzali. With others, a woman of color may be the best spokesperson. For the white man in particular, in our example, however, it is important to create space for unheard voices. Most of my work with the Muslim community is creating space in which their voices can be heard. The reality is that when any one of us is threatened with dehumanization and the loss of human rights, all of us have a part to play in creating space for the voices of those threatened. In other words, we can each show leadership within our in-group by relating to and following the leadership of those most impacted by the caste system. Lastly, practicing authentic allyship is striving to see the world as it is. We encounter a lot of pain when we... Shit. Lastly, practice authentic allyship is striving to see the world as it is, and it is painful to do so. Learning to see the world as it is involves contemplative listening. Listening to self and the divine with and within the self. Listening to others, especially the vulnerable, and the divine with and within others. Listening to the culture and the divine with and within the culture. Listening to the creation and the divine with and within the creation. If the word divine does not work for you, then just replace it with another word that does. Practicing authentic allyship includes cultivating a vision for how the world could, in reality, be. I don't think, for instance, that the world can be free of problems and challenges. I think mortality and risk are built into this universe in which entropy plays an intrinsic part. I think that all of us have a capacity for doing harm to one another. I think that we are all vulnerable to certain types of leadership that can lead us to do reprehensible things or be silent while they happen. But I do think that we can create policies, cultures, and economies of mutuality and justice. I think that we all have a capacity for doing good to one another. I think we all have a capacity to resist certain types of leadership. I think we can speak up, stand up, stand with, and stand behind one another when we are being harmed. I think that we can have an economy that offers a basic safety net and offers opportunity. I also think that we can have a meaning system which offers more than a focus on our economic status, but includes working to see that everyone has enough. Many traditions offer visions for the kind of future that we can build with one another. Dig into the vision that belongs to your own tradition. Let it fill your imagination and your soul. Cultivate that vision. Let it be a power for your life and for your contributions. As we all work to overturn the caste system and build a world of mutuality we long for.